Hello everyone, I've got a bit of a special one for you today. I am going to potentially halve your render times with one button. But you're not getting it that easy. I'm actually going to describe what it is, why it works, and then I'm going to tell you what it is. So, what is the issue? Um, take this landscape. The thing I'm going to be talking about today is essentially specular highlights and why they can be so nasty, surprisingly, for your render times. Uh, in case you're not aware, a specular highlight, let's just uh, make a dark material and give ourselves a nice strong highlight there. And on this landscape, let's just give it a bit more detail. Okay, so when you're lighting an object, you generally have two components uh, for the actual illumination. Uh, one component is what we call the diffuse. In other words, this is the lighting which uh, sticks to the surface. Traditionally, it's your color channel. So when I move my view around, this lighting on this landscape here, it doesn't really change. All of this lighting just kind of sticks to the surface. It doesn't shimmer, it doesn't swirl. It's just stuck on there. The other component is specular. So if you go to your reflectance, we're talking about this default specular here. You can spot this in your view because as you move your, your point of view, your camera, you'll generally notice the lighting swirls and shimmers and sparkles across the surface. Now, this traditionally is incredibly fast. Specular takes absolutely subtle processing power to calculate. In fact, it's so quick, it's it's happening in real time right here. This is uh, giving me a nice good frame rate. So this has absolutely no effect on the render time whatsoever, traditionally. Now, I was working on a project a few days ago, uh, an architectural interior for uh, an exhibition space. And I noticed my render times kept creeping higher and higher, higher than I'd normally expect. Uh, when I do an architectural interior, I would usually expect to have a render time of between maybe five and 20 minutes, depending how complicated the scene is. But I was getting render times of sort of north of an hour and it was really bugging me. So I did a bit of digging, did a bit of research, asked around a few other places. And it turns out the nasty thing which is causing a really big difference, surprisingly, is specular highlights. Now I will, caveat this and say this is only obviously going to affect certain scenes with certain conditions. So let me show you what those conditions are and you can judge whether or not you think this is going to be worth you doing or not. So I've got a cube here. This is going to be my architectural interior. And in these kinds of scenes, you tend to have a lot of light sources. Now I'm going to go for a spotlight and I'm going to use MoGraph to clone it up and give myself a nice big grid up in the ceiling. Now don't worry about what I'm doing here with all these details, I'm really just setting up a, a scene which will show you the problem. So I'm going to make this 10 by 10 grid of lights, I'm going to make them point downwards, and I'm going to make that grid quite a bit bigger. Let's just make sure my room fits around all these objects. There we go. So I've got all these spotlights, they're facing down, oops, that's the room. Uh, they're facing down and shining onto the floor, illuminating it. We won't see this in the editor because frankly, cinema can't handle this many real-time lights anyway. But if I were to render this scene now, let's just get that there, hit render, off it goes, there's all the spotlights, and this whole thing renders in two seconds. So the render time is inconsequential. It's virtually non-existent. But I'm also going to fill this room with a few shapes. Now I'm just going to chuck in a few cubes. These will essentially represent my, my exhibition stand, object people, wh whatever they, they might be. I just need some objects as a sort of stand-in bits of geometry. So th this, should do, th this should do fine. Where does the slowdown happen? How are we going to get these amazing render times? Well, let's look at our materials. What we tend to do these days for a lot of things, if you're aiming for a nice realistic finish, is you'll have some sort of colour or artwork in the colour settings. Fine. And then under reflectance, we tend to add one of these reflection layers. Let's just go for Beckman. 
we make it kind of rough and blurry so there's a bit of a, a soft sheen and to go for a bit more realism although this is another lesson for another day we're going to turn on some Fresnel some dielectric Fresnel so all this does is it adds this sort of a glossy shiny reflective sheen to the object and I'm simply going to apply this fairly simple standard material to all of the objects and onto the room itself and I'm just going to hide these lights because I don't want all these lines in a way so this is what we're dealing with here just ceiling floor walls and a few objects um, the rest of your render settings don't matter too much they really don't make too much difference but what I will do is I will switch this to physical render because this handles uh, glossy rough blurred reflections better than standard does and I'll try and get it to go as quick as I can we'll go for adaptive rendering with automatic quality and we'll go for 10% shading error threshold and this is just a setting which sort of sets how much grain you're willing to put up with 10% is uh, it's an okay good acceptable quality it's not the best but it's not too bad uh, and just because we do have quite a lot of soft blurry reflections I will boost this blurriness subdivision up to four because that will give us a nicer cleaner finish so that all looks fine that all looks good let's give this a render in fact just before I do that let me throw one more light source in here just as a general bit of light for the entire room so that these can come down there that can go down there so I'm just going to give everything a uh, a hard ray trace shadow to keep it nice and simple and I think that should do although I may set my light here to actually have some uh, fall off so it doesn't illuminate everything too much let's see does that look good it's a bit bigger yeah there we go okay so here's my scene lots of cubes there's the room here's all my spotlights pointing downwards and here's just a nice generic light to illuminate the room uh, let's hit render on this let's just check our output yeah that looks good okay so I'm gonna hit render this and come back to it in a minute and we'll see what our render time is and away we go okay there we go so we've got three minutes 41 let's just make that a bit bigger there for you do, 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 do. okay so three minutes 41 no no points for uh, artistic quality uh, now here's the cool thing I'm going to turn off the specular highlight of these lights it will make very minimal difference and let's have a look at what happens with our render time shall we so here we go again specular off and well let's see what we get and there we go 2 minutes 14 we have virtually halved our render times by doing nothing other than disabling the specular highlight now there will naturally be a slight difference between these two renders obviously these ones are shinier than the ones without the specular highlight but all of that can simply be put in by adding a bit more reflection seeing as we already have a reflection in our material uh, all we've got to do is bump up the reflection strength and we can pretty much get all that shininess back into the image um, I will just show you a couple of examples I did early when I was testing this just to show you how much difference it can make in terms of speed and uh, image quality all of this all of this render time just for that little specular highlight um, so yeah my general advice is if you are doing any scenes which will have soft blurry reflections and lots of light sources because the more lights you have with specular turned on the worse this all gets start off by turning the specular off because it makes a massive difference and everything it does can be fully emulated with just a little bit more reflection on, on your object so yeah there you go i hope this has all been useful and i hope this will save you a bit of time in the future uh, this has been mash from 3d fluff i'll see you for the next video